Yes, W. In the face, but really. What's your brother's name? Uh, Corey. Oh uh, yeah, you should just you should just you should go knock on his door and just be like, "Remember me, Corey?" Hello, Corey. <laughs> or maybe you should just if he has a sliding glass window, you should just creep up behind <laughs> his sliding. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Something to think about, man. Something to think about. That'll get him to talk about it. It's obviously a bad memory for him, so let's let's pray on that. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's what we do. I don't I don't know. You might try to kill me or something. So then he'd have to fess up to it. <laughs> yeah, there you Why go. do glowing orange balls bother you so much, Corey? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, man. That's a terrible idea. Can't watch the, I can't watch the orange, but... <laughs> what are you pretty damn sure you saw, or Papa. what's the uh, most unbelievable thing that you know you've seen? That's why he lives here as an FC The Sun. 206 421 rock eight hundred seven eight three rock Back with more of your calls next. We now return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill, 99.9 KISW. Our question, what are you pretty damn sure you saw, or what's the most unbelievable thing that you know you've seen? 206-421-ROCK, 800-783-ROCK. Your email's on the way from the men's room at KISW.com. Hello, Will. Welcome to the men's room. Hi there. Hola. Hola. It was about 10 years ago, I was staying up on Orcas Island, uh, Doe Bay. That's where they have the clothing optional hot tubs and saunas. Ted, do you know about this place? I do not. Uh, Tell me more. Uh, well, it's um, it's it's pretty granola. Um, uh, there's some cabins and some pretty rustic ones, and then you can do the, the tent site. So we had a tent site, mm-hmm. gorgeous view of the sound, and um, but it's a bit of a walk from where the the hot tubs and the saunas were. So I'm walking back. Um, I had yeah, I had a robe on and I had a flashlight and sandals, and um, I'm in a trail, and so there's brush on both sides of this trail. All of a sudden, with no warning at all, I have fur in my face and my hands, and my butt is now on the ground. Um, I, I grab my um, my flashlight as fast as I can to see what, you know, Bigfoot, Bigfoot's on Orcas Island. I don't know. I look up, and I see the back end of a deer as it's walking across the trail. So, so you it, got, it you... didn't run you over. It walked you over? It, it, it hopped into the trail right where I was and, and ran right into me. <laughs> you think the deer did it on purpose? You, like you would think, you know, an animal would know you're right there, and it's just like, you know what? I'd go ahead and knock this guy's well, ass over. Well, if you ever, if you ever um, watch a deer when they're running, they kind of hop. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't think it knew I was there. I think it just hopped into the trail, and I happened to be there, and we just collided. Could you see it at all? Uh, it's all the back end. See, so didn't uh, know if it was a buck or a doe or whatever. Um, uh, I. I I, Did I, testicles no. slap you in the face at any point? No, I saw it was a butt. I don't know if it was a doe or a butt. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Do. So you're not sure. How uh, how thick was this thing? I mean, like, just how massive as far as his body goes? You figure, you know, if you drive your car into it, your car's all effed up. So, well, well I, I I was um I I, I ate fur face on, so. So it had to be at least to my height, and I'm, I'm uh, uh, five foot six. Hey, that's so unusual I'm, to run into a wild animal. I mean, you hear about people getting <laughs> right. bit by a raccoon in a dumpster, or other things like that. That's a little bit different. But actually, just accidentally nudge a wild my animal. Bad. You know, I can't think of anything yeah. other than like you know scuba diving where that could be possible. Well, uh, well, and of course, no one was there to see it except me. So it's, it's still my story, you know. But um, but like, who would uh, lie about that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that's scared, that's not worth lying the bejesus about. Out, scared the bejesus out of me because I mean I just on the ground and had no idea what it was, and then you look up and you see the back end of a deer. And even uh, weirder, you're wearing a robe. Yes, it was. You know, like, on a who trail. Wears, who wears a robe on a trail? I mean, like yeah, I mean honestly, <laughs> God, like I see maybe if you want to take the robe out of the closet there at your Holiday Inn and put it on because you know you. It's kind of settling down a little bit. You don't really have access to the robe. But who brings, like, who decides to go on a, did they have the robes available in the ca- in the, in the cabins? No, is that what happened? No, no, I'm a nerd. This is you my brought your own robe. I brought my own robe. Yeah. Yeah. In the hot tub world, that that's not that uncommon. Okay, but walking on a trail in a robe at night know, to me seems yeah. really, you, you, unless you're a monk. You take the no, robe with you? This is, this is really granola, okay? So this <laughs> wait, is not wait, a right. place at all. Let me ask you, man. So this is 10 years ago. How old, yeah. are, how old are you now? I'm 43. You still a robe guy? Um, not so much anymore. No. What happened? What like what? Um, what happened? They attract deer I mean, miles. Did you get married? I mean, like what happened? I, oh, we, we, I was married at the time. No, I got fat. So there you go. <laughs> you can't wear a robe anymore now. You're fat. No, nah, not anymore. No, no. And I, I don't do the hot tubs and the saunas anymore either because it's not you know it's, you, you just don't want to do that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Interesting. Thanks, guys. Yeah, man. Bye. Yeah. Oh, the hot tubbing robe year's gone. Well, he wants to be a robe guy, but he put on too much weight. How does that happen? He didn't seem like. 
you can't like I could see like what the the extra large is a longer one now. So if it gets extra large, it's like dragging the ground. Is that the way that works? He's only five six, right? That's what I mean, because so. he wasn't that big. So if he's fat, he's got to be really. He's got to look like a weeble wobble. Maybe he's just a little subconscious. Because I, I see think, a lot of people, in fat, fat people in robes all the time. Get back in the tub, man. Get back in your robe. Enjoy yeah. life. I go take a walk down the trail. I'm thinking about uh, enjoying the robe years. I, I really have for a long time. Like I, I'm thinking. Now, hang on, I got to stop you. Can I what tell guy, you? Robe guy going to and from a hot tub is different than just chilling around your house and being robe guy. No, no, no. That's what and that's what I want to be. I want to be the guy that doesn't really have a towel that's hanging in the bathroom that instead is wet and then throws on the robe. Right. Follow me. And then you just want to hang out in the robe, the robe lifestyle, for like an hour, half hour, till I'm completely dry, and you know, let my boys air out and everything, and then I'll go and I'll put on my clothes. The robe lifestyle. I bet it's very comforting. I bet it's freedom. I bet it's something that once you did it, you you would never go back to just regular towel drying. I don't, Especially well, if you had like the kind with a hood on it, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You could walk out like Rocky. I don't know, man. Don't take this. Sorry, you're going to take it the wrong way. There's no other way to take it. I just somehow picture that you, means he's going to take it the right way. I just picture you like. Sitting there, kind of spread eagle with your junk hanging out, smoking a cigarette. Only when, in your uh, only when my, only when my little girl's friends come over. <laughs> <laughs> cross, then, my, cross my leg, real uncomfortable. Uh, let them drop on the cushion. Let, let a big orange ball <laughs> fire out. You can start drinking white Russians too. Hey, girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to taste this? <laughs> What are you pretty damn sure you saw, or what's the most unbelievable thing you know you've seen? 206-421-ROCK, 800-783-ROCK. I don't know what I'm telling you. As soon as you told that, I was like, yeah, he's just going to be sitting there. Junk hanging out. Yeah, just just junk hanging out. Just smoking. He's going to be like, this is relaxing. (laughs) This is great. (laughs) Hello, Joe. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So about um, eight years ago, it was an early Sunday morning, I was heading to my parents' house. And this was out in Livermore, California. And it was on a highway, single lane. And uh, when I was going through there, there was a, um, a guy and his um, son cruising. Uh, the son driving a Ford Mustang, and the dad was driving a Celine S7. I'm not familiar with that exotic car. It was made no. about 10 years ago. If, well, Celine does, you know, the Ford Mustang, they beat them up. And uh, this car ranged about, so, about 500 to 750 grand. Um, very fast car. It better be. It's 750 car. grand. Well, this guy in the lane took a corner too quick and uh, hit the corner and busted up his car. And it's a full carbon fiber frame. And uh, it just happened right when I came around the corner. And you just saw the smoke. And uh, obviously this car that had done a 360 hitting the dirt. And uh, I can tell he wasn't too happy. <laughs> carbon fiber meaning what? What happened to the frame upon impact? I... Well, because it's the carbon fiber, it, when when it hit um, 